start this session. Uh, the first speaker of this session is Juan Pablo uh, Anile. He got PhD in 2011 in University Nacional de Catoba, and since 2015 he is a young researcher in National uh, Research Council of Argentina. And uh, the title of his talk today is on the identification of piecewise constant coefficient in optical diffusion tomography by level set. Please. Thank you. So good morning. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers for the invitation, and, and thanks not only for the organization of this congress, but also for the, the courses that we had last week. Um, and the courses were very interesting. Uh, so, what I'm going to present is a joint work with uh, Adriano Cesaro, Antonio Leitao, and Michael Marquez Alves, uh, and it's about the the identification of coefficient in diffusion optical tomography. Uh, so the outline of, of my talk is the following. First, uh, I'm going to give a short introduction about the problem and the direct problem. Then we will concentrate in the in inverse problem and how to, how, to, how to treat this inverse problem. Then some numerical examples and final, finally some conclusions. So. What is diffuse optimal tomography? Uh, DOT is a non-invasive technique that utilizes light in the near infrared spectrum uh, to measure the optical pro uh, properties of a physical body. So the, this technique relies on the object under study has to be light transmitter or translucent. So it works best uh, on soft tissues such as breast or brain tissue. So by monitoring variations in the light absorption and scattering of the tissue, then we can have a special maps of properties such as total hemoglobin concentration, blood oxygen saturation, etc. So these techniques have been applied in breast cancer, uh, in brain fun functional imaging, stroke detection, and etc. So a simplified uh, equation to model the light propagation is the following diffusion reaction equation. So where U is the photon density, A is the diffusion coefficient, C is the absorption coefficient, and G is the Neumann boundary data. And we were thinking that we have uh, omega is an open bounded problem uh, connected and with Lipschitz boundary. So a, a more realistic situation is to consider here a Robin condition but uh, all the, the results that I, I will show uh, remains valid if we consider a Robin condition. But for simplicity, we consider a Neumann condition. So once the, we have this, this direct problem, then we can define the parameter to measure forward map. So given a, a boundary data G, and a pair of coefficient, a diffusion and absorption coefficient, we can calculate the, the solution of the, the boundary problem. And then we take U, that is the solution, on the, on the boundary, and this is our uh, measurement. And the domain of this forward map is the set of pitchway content functions, AAC and L1, such that A and C um, are bounded from below and from above. And we know these this, this, this numbers. OK, so the first uh, result that we have proved is that the, the forward map is continuous. That is, for each g in j in h minus 1 half, the corresponding forward map is continuous in the L1 topology. The proof is based on a generalization of the Mayer's theorem, which proved that the solution of the direct problem belongs to the space W1P for some p greater than 2. Therefore, we, we, we have uh, like, uh, a better re regularity than the, than the standard regularity that you is in H1. So this result is important then uh, for the, to prove the, the, the theorems of uh, that the, the method that we are going to present is a regularization method. 
So now we concentrate in the inverse problem. So since the optical properties uh, within tissue are de determined by the values of the diffusion and the absorption coefficients, the problem of interest in DOT is the simultaneous identification of both coefficients from measurements uh, taken in, along the boundary. So from a mathematical point of view, we have given a fi finite number. We are, going to we, we are going to work with a finite number of measurements. So given a finite number of measurements corresponding to inputs GIM, so to boundary condition, Neumann condition, we want to find a pair AC such that this equation is valid for all the measurements. But uh, given the nature of the measurements, we cannot expect that such data are available. Instead, was one disposes uh, an approximate measured data. So, uh, so we are going to consider this data H M delta, where delta is the noise level. So the problem is this one. Uh, how do we treat this, this problem? We, we, we consider a level set approach. So uh, what is this? So we want to recover two uh, coefficients, A and C. So we consider two level set functions, phi A and phi C, that are in H1. And these level set functions are chosen in such a way that the discontinuities of these coefficients are located along its zero level sets. Okay. Then the diffusion and absorption coefficient can be written in these forms, where H is the heavy side function. So the heavy side function takes the value zero for negative numbers and value one for positive numbers. So is phi, for example, if phi A is, is positive, then this is, is one, and A takes the value A1, and if phi A is negative, this takes the value zero, and A takes the value A2. The same for the coefficient C. So now the inverse problems can be rewrite, rewrite in, in these terms. So we want to find two level set functions such this equation is, is, is valid for uh, all the data, all the measurements. So a natural uh, alternative to obtain stable solutions is to use a little square approach combined with a Tikhonov regularization. Okay, we co consider this Tikhonov uh, regularization. So alpha here is the unique uh, regularization parameter and beta A and beta C are scaling factors. So alpha is the unique uh, regularization parameter. The term H, H1 acts act as a control on the size of the norm of the level set function and also plays a key role to prove the existence of mini minimizers. And then the, the term with the BB seminorm is well known to penalize the length of the, the boundary of the level sets. So we, we consider this uh, regularization uh, function. OK, but in general, variational minimization techniques involve compact embedding arguments and the continuity of the operator on the set of admissible functions to guarantee uh, the existence of minimizers. But here we are dealing with the heavy side operator, and then this operator P is discontinuous. So we are going to define this smooth approximation. So H epsilon is just the, the the heavy side function, but it's zero until minus epsilon, and then from minus epsilon to zero, it starts to grow up to one, and then it's one. And once that we have this uh, approximation of the heavy side function, then we use this uh, operator p epsilon. That is the same that the that p, but here is the h epsilon in, instead of h, instead of the heavy side function. So now we, we define the, we, we use in fact the, the concept of generalized minimizer. So what is a generalized minimizer? So a vector phi a, phi c, zeta a, and zeta c is called admissible if there exists a sequence of function in H1 and a sequence of, of real numbers converging to zero such that these two limits are, are valid. So, the, the problem here is that we are uh, considering discontinuous functions. So if, if for a moment we, we, we think that 
the, the H function, it's not the heavy side, but a continuous function. Here we can take H epsilon k equal to H. And so this zeta j is nothing but the, the image of the, uh, for example, zeta a is the image of uh, pa, uh, and zeta c is the image of h of uh, phi c. Okay? So the, the problem is that we are considering uh, a discontinued function h, the, the heavy side function. So if we have a, a sequence that converts, we, we cannot say that the if this, the sequence converts, we cannot say that, that the limit uh, of h of the sequence is equal to h of the limit of the sequence. Okay? So we have to generalize this concept, but if we, we, if we consider continuous uh, function here, this reduces to, to the, the usual. So now a generalized minimizer of the function, of the Tijonat function, is an admissible vector minimizing this function. So it's the same as the, the Tijonov functional, but here we have changed. Instead of P, we, we use Q, and Q is like the same of P, but here instead of having H of, of phi, we have the zeta and zeta C. And rho is the same, but is defined in this way. So the, the idea is that low is, uh, uh, rho is lower semi-continuous. So now the f hat, we can prove that a change minimizer on the set of admissible uh, vectors. Moreover, we have conversion of the exact data. So if we, had, if we have h delta equal to h, and for every alpha, and we have this is a minimizer of the f hat that we have is true because we have we have proved this here. Then for every sequence of positive numbers, alpha k converging to zero, then we can extract a subsequence, they're not again, but the, but the same, that is strongly convergent, and moreover, the limit is, is a solution of one. So the limit is a solution of the equation that we, we want to solve. Conversion of for noisy data, so if we consider that alpha is a function of delta satisfying that when delta goes to zero, alpha goes to zero, but also when delta goes to zero, delta square over alpha goes to zero, zero. Uh, then if we take a sequence of delta k, uh, of positive numbers converging to zero, and the corresponding noise data, then we can extract a subsequence that converts to a solution of the problem that we want to solve. So this is our, the classical result of regularization uh, theory. But we are, uh, our ob objective is to, to, to design a, a, an algorithm to, to find the, the, the parameters, uh, the diffusion and the coefficients, uh, and the, the diffusion, sorry, and the absorption coefficient. So for the numerical uh, point of view, we are going to think in this <coughs> functional. So it's the same as the Tijonov functional, but here we replace the P with P epsilon, and the, the regularization functional is this, that is the same, but here is the, with h epsilon instead of, of, of h. So with a smooth heavy side instead of the heavy side function. For this functional, we can see that if we fix alpha and epsilon, then attain some minimizers in, in h1. And moreover, if we fix epsilon, then for each, uh, sorry, if we fix alpha, then for each epsilon, we have a minimizer, and we can see that there exists a sequence of positive number epsilon converging to zero, that this converts strongly in this space, and the, limited is a generali and the limit is a generalized minimizer of f alpha. So the important thing here is that the minimizer of f alpha epsilon are close to the minimizer of f alpha. But differently from f alpha, the Tijonov functional, the minimizer of this functional can be computed. So to compute this, we have to derive the first order uh, optimality condition for, to find a minimizer. So if we derive the first order uh, optimality condition, this is this, then this is, is equivalent to solve this boundary problem. So this term here is nothing but 
the derivative of this and this, so, and, and the, the, with this. And the term in the, in the left is just the, the derivative of this, uh, these two terms. OK? So now we have all the ingredients to, to define a, 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 an algorithm. And so if we see that we are in the iteration k, so we have two levels of function, phi a and phi c, k, then we, we have to solve the direct problem. We compare with our measurements, and then we uh, calculate the residual. Once that we have the residual, we want to uh, calculate these two terms, OK? Because we have to calculate this here. And to calculate these two terms, we have to resolve two adjoint problems. Once that we have, once, uh, we have to uh, evaluate this, we have to calculate now this problem here. It's here, it is, it's the same. And then the solution, we update the, the level and function in, in this way, OK? So this is our algorithm. So some numerical examples. So the, the diffusion coefficient is this circle in blue that is 10 inside the inclusion and one outside. And then we uh, have to, th this is the absorption coefficient, two squares, that is 10 uh, inside and one outside. Uh, ah, for these numerical examples, we use uh, for this thing uh, boundary data each one supported on each side of the, of the, the boundary. For instance, g1 is, is this function, OK? It's in the bottom. Then g2 is in the, in the right, g, g3 on the top, and g3 in, on the left, g4, sorry. And in order to avoid inverse crimes, uh, the direct problem was solved using a finite element in a uniform grid with uh, 100 nodes, nodes and uh, on each boundary side. And for the iterative process, all the boundary value problems were solved in a uniform grid with uh, 50 nodes and on, at each boundary side. Uh, in all cases, uh, the level cell function uh, was a probability what with different minima. And we ran with the, the algorithm for different initial data, but all the results are more or less the same. So the fair numerical example is this. Here, we concentrate just in the uh, identification of the absorption coefficient, so in the coefficient c, OK? And we did two different uh, experiments. The first is if we assume that we know the, the diffusion coefficient exactly. And we run the algorithm, so we want to recover these two squares, and we, we start with this initial data, this initial condition, sorry. So the algorithm, what it makes is like the, the, this orange circle start to grow, and then start to do it like this, and split into, into, uh, into sets. Then we did the following one experiment. We assume that we don't know uh, uh, the um, diffusion coefficient, and we set the diffusion coefficient equal to 1. And we run the algorithm again. Okay? So, it's more or less, so the, the results are better in this, in this case, but here, at, at least the, the algorithm uh, detects that it uh, had two inclusions. So then we did the same, but now we concentrate in the identification of the diffusion coefficient A. So we did the same. First, we assume that we uh, know the, the absorption coefficient. Uh, we, we know exactly. And we run the algorithm. We want to recover this inclusion, and we start here and we finish it there. And then we did the same with different examples. And some, in some cases, this uh, this uh, what uh, we also observe, that we have a horrible uh, identification of the, of the coefficient reconstruction. So some facts to change into account. So the method for identification C or the absorption coefficient performed well, even if a good approximation of A is not known. On the other hand, the method may generate a sequence, AK, that does not approximate A if we don't have a good approximation of the uh, absorption coefficient. And for the simultaneous uh, identification of the both coefficients, 
we observe that the error, this, this error decreased from the very first iteration. However, the, the error uh, of the diffusion coefficient starts improving when we have a, a good approximation of the uh, absorption coefficient. So taking into account this fact, we decided to, <coughs> to do this, to, to, to put in uh, this split uh, uh, strategy. So what we have done is, first, we freeze uh, the diffusion coefficient to a, uh, a equal to 1, and iterate only with respect to say until the sequence uh, of, say, uh, of CK stagnates. That, so we have, like, this error is, is small. After that, we fix the coefficient C and iterate with respect to A until the sequence uh, AK stagnates. And then we, we start to uh, iterate uh, consider, uh, the both coefficient. And we, uh, so each iteration consists one iteration of C and two iteration of A, because A takes more time to, to, to converge. So the results, some of the results are, are this. So we, we want to recover this is the diffusion coefficient and this is the absorption coefficient. So we start iterating with, with respect to the uh, absorption coefficient and this is fixed. And then once we, we have a, a good approximation, we start to, uh, to iterate with respect to the diffusion coefficient, that is this part here. And, and then here is the, the same we start to, to iterate with respect to both coefficients, and then we recover this. Here is another example. Now, sorry, the supports are closer. And we start, again, we start to iterate with respect to C until this. And then we start to, to iterate with respect to A, and then we res uh, we respect to both coefficients and we get this with this result. So the, the question is, until when? Uh, and what we, what we have done is, OK, if we consider just the, the identification of this coefficient, we see that it takes like, like uh, 500 uh, iterations. So we decided to take uh, 250 iterations, OK? So because we, we, we think that in the middle of the, the, the process, we are, we are not, uh, we don't have a, a very good reconstruction, but we are close, and we just can start to iterate with respect to this. So, okay. So in conclusion, we develop a level set approach for the simultaneous reconstruction of the piecewise constant coefficient A and C for an affinite set of boundary measurements uh, of optical tomography in diffuse regime. Uh, we proved that the forward map is continuous in the L1 topology, and hence, by previous results, the presented level search approach is a regularization method. Uh, then we propose a split strategy for the simultaneous identification of uh, the diffusion and absorption coefficient. And this numerical strategy has not only demonstrated that it gives very good results, but also reduced significantly the computational time. So that's all. Thank you very much for your attention. Okay, thank you for the nice talk. Any